All right, hello everyone, this is Mr. Crocher, and I am going over our final review practice problems. This is your last chance to get ready for the final. Um, first problem, I drew this angle right here, and it says sine's an acute angle, so I can go ahead and put it in the first quadrant if I want to. And I have all the values I need. I solved this with Pythagorean theorem, and now to do tangent, it's fairly simple, opposite over hypotenuse. But then people get to this and they don't know what to do. Well, we don't know what theta is, so we can't multiply it by 2. But we can use any one of these formulas right here. And I chose to use this one right here because I knew the sine value. So when you see these double angles, your mind should go to this box. On second problem, um, I can't solve this because there's cosines and sines. But I do know this trig identity, that sine squared of anything plus cosine squared of anything is equal to 1. So I can replace that cosine squared with that version of it. I can do the work here, factor it, and I have sine of x is 3 and sine of x is 2. Well, neither of those values, you can't find an angle that has a sine of 3. Sine's between negative 1 and 1, so there are no solutions. Now, same deal over here. I have sine and cosine, and I could switch this to a version of cosine squared, but my choice was to take this cosine squared and change it into this top identity right here, because if we do that, we have a negative sign and a positive sign, and those just are zero. And then I can finish solving the equation there. On number four, the, the triangle problem, how many triangles are possible? Always write these two letters at the bottom, and then we have a height there. And the height is found by doing the sine of 35 is h over 12. So I figured out this height is 6.9. Now what that means is this piece up here that needs to go right here, it could swing down and it'd go past the 6.9, so it'd go down into here somewhere. Meaning I can't have just one triangle. It could go this way or it could go that way. And it can fit in here between 6 and 12, and it can fit out here. So I have two triangles, and I just drew them here what they would look like. The angle could be going backwards, 7, or it could be going forwards. There's those two choices for angles. There are two sides. It comes down to this height. You always have to find that height to know how many triangles you have. On the back, a plane leaves an airport flying at a bearing of 251. Well, 251, if that's 251 and this is 270, that's 19 degrees. So I just come down, I draw my little triangle here, and it's 19 degrees here. I need a west and a south. Well, the south is a sine function, and the west is a cosine function. And you can do the math. I believe it rounded to 253. All right. Um, next, adding two vectors. Well, we just add the vectors once they're in component form. So we have to take each of these vectors here and here and run them through m cosine of theta m sine of theta. Well, the only tricky part about this is that this value right here is this angle here, but we have to use it as a unit circle, so it's 150. Now what I like to do is just add these on one line. I'm going to go 5 cosine of 150 plus 5, or sorry, 4 cosine of 50. I'm going to add those two in one line. And there's my value. Whoops, I don't think I'm in radians. Or I think I'm in radians. I need to be in degrees. Let's do that again. There's that value there. Now I'm going to change them. Now, now I'm going to go 5 sine of 150 plus 4 sine of 50. And there are my components. Pythagorean theorem for this. Inverse tangent for this. And the inverse tangent you're going to get, let's watch this. The inverse tangent we're going to get is, and make sure you avoid rounding. I, I wrote out four decimals here, but at, at least write four. I mean, if you can, write them all down, or if you can, store it in your calculator. But you don't want to round here. You don't want to put 1.8, and you definitely don't want to put 5.6 here. We don't round in the middle of a problem. Press Enter, 72 degrees. What does that mean? Well, let's look at where these vectors are. This is a vector going this way. This is a vector going this way in orange. If I were to take this orange vector and put it right there, well, the resulting vector here, let's do it in yellow, the resulting vector is right there. That's a resulting. So 
This is 72 degrees up from 180. 72 degrees up that way. So there's my theta on the last one. All right, on the next one, the tractor problem, we have a linear or an angular speed here, four revolutions in a second. I switched one hours, 3,600 seconds. You could have done 60 and 60 for minutes and hours. And here's the key here. This is the circumference one. The circumference of a circle is two pi r. So around the circle, a revolution right here, around the circle is two pi radius. The radius here is 2.5. And then I switch the miles to feet, 4.3. On the last one, the amplitude is two. The period is two pi divided by six, which is just pi over three. The phase shift is left four units, and the midline is three. So we have all those problems. There's the graph, midline, maximum, minimum. The lowest this graph goes down is down to negative one. The highest it goes up to five. That's the min and the max. And the period starts at negative four. And how far is it? Negative four plus pi divided by three. It's only going to go to negative 2.9. So this, this wave is going to go from negative 4 to 2.9 right there. And it's going to go down and up because it's a negative sine graph. So that, that little wave happens right there. Usually they happen over a course of 2 pi, but this one happens over a course of pi over 3. All right, hope this helps with our last practice problems.